Great morning. Welcome once again. You'll see I have a different position in this room. <laughs> Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. And we are going to continue our intentional course that is moving and pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So we are continuing to pursue uh, the one who has pursued us because that's the reason we are saved. That's the reason we're in this path because God himself has, has uh, by his spirit, has moved to bring us into the light and sent his son to pay the price for us to be saved. So we are an intentional course and we are excited about it. And so I'm over trying to figure out which way to look on this thing. But I'm excited. Um, we're, this morning, we're going to continue talking about the heart. Um, about the heart. We talked the other day um, about being uh, the soul going through various things, uh, coming to the mercy seat of God. And so it, I stopped in short of talking about the heart. And I want to talk a little bit about the heart because it's out of the heart perceived the issues of life out of the heart and so we're going to deal with that and from the perspective that God is going to circumcise the heart circumcise the heart you know like the the, the uh, foreskin of the man who it produces uh, children in the flesh <clears throat> God had made a covenant that they be circumcised on the eighth day the eighth day we all, we've been talking a little bit about the eighth day Sabbath and the circumcision comes on the eighth day that's coming to me now. And so, um, and we're going to pray and then we're going to sing this song, Sign Me Up. <laughs> For the Christian Jubilee, write my name on the road. Okay, we're going to sing this song. So let's pray. We thank God for everyone who log on to this YouTube channel. This is Doris L. Allen, me, searching the scriptures, just a, a, an epistle. As they say, living epistles, read of men, reading me, okay? The people are reading me, because people are reading you every day, even if you don't know it. They read you, you know, whatever uh, message that you're sending out through your continents, through your words, through your uh, uh, clothing, through your actions, they are reading you, okay? And we read each other all the time, okay? And so we want them to see Christ in us. We want to see God in us. We want them to know that I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. We want to sing that song. <laughs> I want to be ready when Jesus comes. And so we're going to deal with the, the fact, uh, we're going to go back and look in Genesis when God said, let make man. And then after man fell, uh, we're going to look at that part that says that man has become like us. Okay? That means we have a will. Um... Man has a will, and that is what you're seeing that's being carried out, is the will of man. <laughs> and he tries to uh, act like now, as because the enemy had to, uh, well, let's pray first. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, for being our God, for being able to come before you through Christ. Thank you, Jesus, to the throne of grace to find help in the time and deed, to seek you while you may be found and call upon you while you're near. We call upon you in the mighty messages name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the door. My God, the only way to you is through Christ. We thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. It's because of your sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. We thank and praise you that you open up the door. Hallelujah. Into the presence of God, our Father. We are humbled as you have paid the price for us. We recognize, oh God, that we could not do it without you. We could not come into this realm at all, except our koshe, hallelujah, that you, hallelujah, took on our sins and bore our sins and our sorrows and gave us your righteousness that we be able to approach the throne of grace, be able to preach, approach the God of creation, Lord God. We thank and praise you, Lord God, hallelujah, for the work that you have begun in us. You will perform it. We thank you to the day of Jesus Christ, the day coming when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord of Lord and 
King of Kings, the creator, the maker, Lord God, the word of God made flesh, Lord God, that we will know you fully, God. We will know even as we are known, God, in the name of Jesus. But God, my day, Sakosha, because hold now, we look through a glass darkly, Lord God, but one day we will see clearly and be able to see and understand, Lord God, what your purpose and plan is. Help us to yield to you, our body, soul, spirit, our will, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to have your way. Order our steps in your word, Lord God, dear Lord. My God, lead us and guide us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Transform us, God. My God, in the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. We need this morning, we're talking about our hearts. You the one that searched the hearts and you try the rain. You could give me and that koshe to give every man according to his deed. God, in the name of Jesus, help us, O oh God, to yield our will to your will as we continue to press on. Oh God, in my nasa kosher, help us to walk in the light of your word. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus. We recognize, oh God, we need your guidance. We need you, hallelujah, Lord God, to lead and guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way in us, God, in the name of Jesus. Take out anything, any bitterness, any root of bitterness, God, anything that's contrary to you. Uproot it, God, in the name of Jesus. Circumcise our hearts, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We yield to you our body, soul, spirit, will, everything that pertains to us. We realize, oh God, hallelujah, we need you, hallelujah, to work in us both to will and to do of your pleasure. As we say yes to your will, your way, and your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we are going to go because we're going to be dealing with circumcision of the heart. But I want to go back and look at the fact that God has given us a will. And uh, <clears throat> now that this came to me as I was getting up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because God said, let us make men in our own image and after our likeness. Let me go read that. Okay. In verse 26, it says of Genesis, the first chapter. We want to go back to the how do we get a will? <laughs> and, and what is a will? What is a will? Because we're now we're going to see in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Okay. And our likeness. Okay. So the likeness of God, since he's not uh, flesh, well, he became flesh through Christ. He, he put on flesh. But he says, in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, not the image of a cow or a bull, in his own image, in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. See, these is talking about have dominion over the fish of the seas and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb and bearing a seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in which it is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and so it was so and god uh saw that everything that he made and behold it was very very good now he used a very good okay but we're going to see that God can move on from very good to excellent. There's a difference. Okay. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. So man was created on the sixth day. Okay. So now you go there and you see Adam and Eve was in the garden. And this, and they, uh, in the garden, we see uh, God begin to give them, put them in the garden. Okay. And then God said to them, um, they can eat of every tree. Okay. He talks about the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, where this garden is located. And then it says, but the tree of the knowledge of good and eve, evil, the tree of the knowledge, knowledge. See, it's talking about knowledge. Okay. Of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eateth thereof, thou shalt surely die. 
the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat that, okay? Because the day that you do it, okay? See, see now some people say, well, he's placed them there and he said they're in his image, but then he placed them there and then he gives them uh, a choice, okay? Because see, it's not one thing to say you have a will and you can't exercise the will, okay? Or like some people say, they want to take control of people and control their will. Then they become their uh, dominating. So no, he said, I'm going to give them, but I'm going to give them some advice. He says, of the tree of knowledge and eating the doubt, uh, shall not eat of it. He's giving them his advice. Because when we have a will, we have a choice. Okay? But God tell them. The Lord said unto them, it is not good. Okay? So the, eat it, the day that eat of the tree, uh, thou shalt surely die. Okay? And then it's done. This is before he has a woman. Because he says, um, it is not good that man should be alone. Okay? Uh, and I will make him a helper. Okay? And he made Eve. And we know the story he made Eve. And then we go down um, to chapter 3. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea. So God made the man. Now this is like leaving out a lot of little stuff in there because there's a lot more going in that garden. But he's highlighting what we need to know, okay? Because God is talking to the person who has a will. You're not a mannequin where he can control the strings, you know, uh, like the uh, the ventriloquist who's uh, speaking out of no. No, you actually have a power to make a decision yourself, okay? And so now the serpent comes, and he knows man has this too. And he says to the woman, he goes to the woman who's the weaker vessel according to the scripture, and he begins to reason with her, with her understanding. But you can see what happened then. <clears throat> then the woman gave so that he was enticing her to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, enticing the woman. And a lot of people blame the woman, but according to the scriptures here, uh, I don't know where the man was, but the serpent got to her. Okay, he was there, and it doesn't explain where Adam was that day that the serpent had a chance to entertain and talk to her and reason with her. It doesn't say what was going on. Okay. But he did get to her, and then she did get to eat the fruit, and then she did give it to her husband, okay? Uh, and he said, and then we see that God uh, comes to visit them. And, and for God does know that, so the serpent is saying, for God does know that the day that you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods. You shall be as God, knowing good and evil, okay? You shall be as gods. Okay, so this, this tree of knowledge of good and evil is going to make you, as according to the serpent, as God. Okay, and then it says, um, the woman saw it and she ate it, and the eyes of them, and she gave it to her husband. She said, okay, it looked good to the eyes, looked good to the eyes. Look at this here. See, this little thing that is, is appealing to the, the woman is, uh, God knoweth that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, knowing good and evil, okay? And the woman saw that the tree was good, so she saw with her eyes. And it was pleasant to and pleasant to the eyes. And the tree was to be desired, which is a, was the a condition of the heart, which is a condition of the soul, to make one wise. Wise means it's pride, okay? So he's appealing to her eyes. He appealing to her pride. Her pride. And, and she took the fruit thereof and ate and gave it to her husband and and with her, and he did eat. So the this reasoning power, which is the is the will, the will to something to make you wise when you look at it. So we the things that the um the the pride of life, the the greed, all these things talk. I looked at the seven um a deadly sins, but the adversary appealed to her her what she saw. He was entering the ear. He was entering the heart to be wise. You shall be wise. Well, who doesn't want to be wise? <laughs> okay. So now this will is in operation. Okay. Okay. And then they ate and they both, and then God visited them. And then it says the eyes of them both were open and they knew, they knew that they were naked. Now, this knowledge is see of good and evil. Now they recognize we are naked. Now, where does the word naked come from? Why are you naked? Now, 
He made them perfect just like they were. And they didn't see any part of them that needed to be uh, covered because there was no shame in it. There was no, no consciousness of shame. But now shame has entered in and they recognize what you part, what part you think they covered up. Okay. That's the loin part. They covered up their private parts. They said, we're naked. Okay. They saw the part of them that deals with reproduction, that deals with uh, intimacy. They saw that part and they said, oh, we're naked. But in the eyes of God, they wasn't naked. They were perfect, okay? They were perfect. But now they got another concept of their private parts. They got another understanding. And they said, oh, God, we naked. <laughs> we naked, okay? Because they got a new meaning for what God had made the reproduction of. Now, they could have looked at um, their arms. They could have looked at any part of their body. But they looked at their private parts and said, Oh, we naked. Okay. So that, that knowledge came through the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. So now we don't put an, another twist on a part of your body, another twist on the part of your body. And that same part that now they see now as naked, and the enemy now is going to try to take control of that part. Okay. You want to get that part. Because, see, that's what they just confess, that we're open and we're naked in that area. We're naked, okay? Then anytime you're open and naked to something, that means you're exposed, okay? And they, and the enemy said, see, now, when they got the tree of knowledge, maybe they could have said, uh, my ear was, was, a, was an issue, my eye. But they saw, and the enemy heard out of their own mouth that they were naked. He said, ah, that's what this tree did. It revealed that's the area I can come and deal with them, with their reproductive organs. So the enemy learns something from out of their own mouth that they're naked. And then it says, and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. And they showed, uh, sewed fig leaves together, figs, and made themselves aprons. And they... Heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Now that they're naked, they're hiding. Now they was not naked before God. They didn't even have a concept of being naked with God. They was in a state of innocence. They was just glorying in their bodies. They didn't even have a thought of being naked. Now they got a mindset is I'm naked. You know, whatever you, nobody wants to be naked in front of anybody. And sometimes you be because when you're naked, you're vulnerable. Okay, that's what it means. You're you're vulnerable. Now they hiding from God. Okay, this is all we moving up to the will. Okay, and moving to the heart. So now they are uh, hiding from God, and so uh, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Okay, and the Lord called unto Adam and said to him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Now fear has entered into him. He's hiding from God, and he know that he's naked. Okay, he's naked. Now you think a baby, when you get, is born, and he kicking him, you think he know he's naked? No, because that thought ain't ever entered into his mind and into his heart. He don't even think of himself as being naked. Just as free as they could be. Okay, but now because of this tree, of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. And, and, and see this this will that God gave them. So and, and we kind of say, well, why did God give them a will? Because we're gonna see that that will is, is is a powerful thing. Okay, it's a powerful thing. And now that they have got a taste of good and evil, and then God said, um, to um, and who told you the knowledge? Who told you that you was naked? Who told you that? Who put that concept into your conscience and into your thoughts that you are naked? Where that word come from? Okay. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Okay. Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you was inferior? Who told you that you was less than someone? Who told you that you was ignorant? Who told you that you was this? Who told you? Who? Where did you get that knowledge from? Okay. Where did you get that from? Where did this new knowledge come from that you are speaking this now over your own life? I'm naked. <laughs> and I'm afraid. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You said you're going to have what you say. 
Okay. And it says, and God, so we see that God judged them. Okay. And God and God judged the serpent. Uh, and God judged the uh the uh told us God judges the, the serpent, okay? And um first of all, Adam blamed the woman. He said, Lord, the woman you gave me, she's the problem. She's the well, she's the problem. And from then on, the males have been saying, it's the women that's the problem. They didn't go to the serpent. They didn't go to anything or their lack of being the head. They, they listen. He, that little lesser vessel, he snuck in and got her, and she's the one that opened the door. Okay, okay. But not that he, his, his, his position, which God told him before he get made Eve, Adam, I want you to have dominion, and I, he told him that. Okay. So, but anyway, this going back to the God, God, the man, the woman, the child. Okay, okay. So God already talked to him. Okay, and men still forfeiting their position in, because they have to take instruction from God. Okay, but now he got a will. So we see here, and God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly thou shalt go, dust shall thou eat all the day of thy life. So apparently he was not uh, on the ground, y'all. He was upright. I had a book that I gave Bishop Roy Bryant. Where he saw the serpent was up. He was not on his belly. He was up. He was walking upright. Okay. Uh, and now God cursed him and said, you're going to be eating the dust. Okay. So God changed his, 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 uh, where he was. Now you got to eat dust. You got to crawl. Before he was, he was walking up. Okay. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall, her seed shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. So here again, we got a, a issue between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, okay? So there's two seeds. Uh, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply the sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee, okay? The husband shall now, he got to be watching over you and be careful over you, okay? Because he, now, these are now uh, in the realm of a fallen man and woman. They are fallen they're in a fallen condition, having fear, knowing they're naked. So now he says, I'm going to put your desire under Adam now. And Adam, you have to be watching over her. Okay, and then he tells Adam. And they said, the Lord said, behold, the man is become. Verse 22 of the third chapter. Then it said, the Lord said, behold, the man is become as one of us. Now, he just said, let us make man in our own image. And then because they ate of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat thereof forever. Therefore, God sent him forth out of the garden to till the ground. Okay, so God said man has become as one of us. Okay, because see, before Adam and Eve ate of the tree, there was evil because the, serp, the, uh, the Satan was cast down out of heaven. Okay, so, and, and so this, is, this doesn't give us the plan why God knew. He says in here, I'm creating a creature after my image and in my likeness. Okay, and I am giving him a will, and I'm giving him instruction, and I'm giving him orders. But then he says, the Lord said, behold, the man has become as one of us. Behold, like he said, behold, my beloved son, look down. He has become as one of us. What is he going to do with the man now that has become as one of us? What are we going to do with him? Lest he now put forth his hand and eat the tree of life, I'm going to put him out the garden. Okay, I'm taking him because I don't want him to eat the tree of life now because now there's something he is now become like us. What is God going to do with this man that has become as one of us, one of like God? He become like God. He can choose good and he can choose evil. He know them both now. So God put them out. And it says, God put them out and, and, uh, and he put them forth to till the ground. 
So he drove them out the man and placed him in the east garden, at the east of the garden of Eden. No, he placed man at the east. No, he didn't. I'm reading this wrong. So God drove man out of the garden and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep. So he placed a cherubim there, okay, to a, with a flaming sword to keep the way of the tree of life. So the tree of life was now being guarded. We cannot let them come to the tree of life because they're in this state. Okay, and so you see here that God now has to work with Adam and Eve and not allow them to eat of the tree of life. So this is the now the process comes and it says that Christ was slain from the foundation. Okay, so even then God made uh, coats of skin and, and covered them. So God began to work with this uh, vessel which has a will and has uh, ability to uh, now know good and evil, become one like God. So man was uh, uh, received this uh, in his uh, spirit to be able to reason and to be able to choose. And as we go on, you can see God telling him, I set before you life and death in the book of Deut Deuteronomy, choose life. So he starts working with this creature, who man, uh, to help him submit his will to life, to submit his will, to choose life, to not choose uh, evil, to choose good. So now that he is now a knowledgeable of it, now man has to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Are you going to walk in evil or are you going to walk in good? Okay, so now I want to I'll highlight that, which took 26 minutes, y'all. Oh, please forgive me. Okay, so now we're going to go uh, to see that God begins to tell them that he is going to, uh, we're going to go back to talking about circumcision. We're going back to Genesis. Genesis is 17 chapter. And God, this is why we know from the book, Genesis is the book of beginnings, okay? He talks about circumcising the heart because that's where now Adam's heart now has been uh, <clears throat> invaded by good and evil. His heart is dead. But God tells us something in the 17th chapter, um, circumcision uh, of Genesis, the 17th chapter, where God begins to talk about, because now remember, it's his loins and his, his reproductive organ that he's now uh, uh, naked, okay? So 17th chapter of Genesis, um, verses 10, um, and it says, uh, this is my covenant. This is, uh, and when Abram, this is fast forwarding to Abram. So God is making a covenant. Uh, was 90 years old. The Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me, me and thee. And I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and, and, and talked with God saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall the, thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Have I made thee? And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, which is going back to the first Adam. Okay? Be fruitful, and I will make nations... I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between thee and thy seed, and after thee in thy, their generation for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land. Okay, so God's making a promise. And this is my covenant, which I shall make between me and you, thy seed, and every male child among you shall be circumcised. Cutting off the foreskin because see that's how you get that's how you multiply. That's how the man, the flesh of man, is coming through that same part. He said, I'm naked now. Okay. So he said, Every male or every man child among you shall be circumcised. He shall you shall circumcise the flesh of his foreskin, for it shall be a token. Okay, it's not the it's a token. It's not the final thing. It's the token of the covenant between me and thee. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised. Shall be circumcised on the eighth day. It's the eighth day's circumcision. 
among you, every male child in your generation, he that is born of in your house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with your money must need be circumcised. My covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And the Lord said unto Abraham, okay, so we're going to stop there, okay. Genesis um, down to the 14th verse, okay. And so now we're going to see that God continues on and God begins to say, I'm going to circumcise the heart. So this is Genesis. Now we're going to go to uh, Deuteronomy, okay? And then we're going to go to Deuteronomy. I hope you can see that this circumcision of the foreskin is, is his covenant in the flesh, okay? It's in the flesh because every um, a child on the earth is coming through those same parts. He said that is naked now. And the enemy heard that said to, oh, they're naked. I'm going to deal with that part. And all through the mankind is the enemy but working with that same part, okay? But then God said, when they come underneath as a circumcision, okay, I will put a covenant with them. I will make a covenant with them to circumcise them, okay? But then God said, this is a covenant of the flesh on the eighth day, which the eighth day, um, we're going to sing the song at the end, y'all. On the eighth day, is the day that Christ rose from the dead, okay? His flesh, he died as a, as a human being with flesh, okay? And then on the eighth day, he rose, okay? So it's the eighth day covenant. So now in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, okay? Um, and, and it says, that God promises remain constant. And it shall come to pass that when all these things, as God was talking to Moses, and talking to the, the children of Israel, which he told Abraham, your seed shall be down there in Egypt. And God uh, uh, said, in, I will visit them. Okay, so now that God has visited the children of Israel 400 and some years later, time, you see, does, time doesn't mean anything with God, okay? It does mean something, but we can't get caught up with the uh, time, it's, especially we are just uh, under 200 years. So, and it, this chapter 30 and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curses that I have set before thee, thou shalt call them to mind. Okay. Among all the nations, whether he, the Lord, thy God has driven thee and shall return unto the Lord thy God. So God is dealing with this new creation that knows good and evil. He become, as the Lord said, as one of us. Okay. He said, now, when all these things come upon you, not that you know good and evil, good and evil going to come upon you, okay? So now God is, is working with this new creation, okay? Not this, not the, the one, uh, he done went from the form of being in the, or off the earth. He didn't come from that form, and God breathed into him, and now he's up, he's moving. This creation is moving, and now he was talking with God, but now that he know good and evil, he got the inside and he's reasoning. This, this new creation, this new Adam. Is now reason. So, but he goes through experiencing good and evil. Okay. And that's why God said, Thou shall be, it says, um, it says, and it shall come to pass when the, all these things, which you can read all the things in the book of Deuteronomy, the blessings and the curses come upon you, and all these things which are good and evil coming upon you. Okay. And thou shalt return unto me, um, Return unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, and thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, okay? He want them to turn to him, to choose good, okay? Because it says in Deuteronomy, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. I want you to choose. He said to them, choose, okay? He said, choose. I want you to choose. Okay, and then uh, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee, and will turn and gather thee from all the nations. With this is now this is talking about this particular verse in Deuteronomy is all the way into current time Israel. I will scatter you all over the all over the the world. Okay, it, if any of thine be driven out into the uttermost parts of the heaven, and thence will the Lord gather thee. So this prophecy in Deuteronomy is all the way to the current time. 
Because when God scattered Israel to the four corners all over, okay, the, the, the book of Genesis got it all in there, okay. And if any time of thine, if any of thine be driven out, okay, uh, to the uttermost parts of the heavens, from this will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from this will he fetch thee. I'm going to fetch you out of there. Okay? And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land of thy father's position, which we know that's talking about Israel and the seed of Abraham. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Okay? That's what he's talking I will circumcise your heart. This is moving from the foreskin, okay, the covenant of the foreskin. Now he tell them in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Torah, the first five books of the law, and in the last book of the law, which is Deuteronomy, he said, I'm going to circumcise your heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God would put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee Plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of... This is talking to about the millennial reign. Because their heart not circumcised yet. God is circumcising our heart. He's working in our hearts. Okay? okay? He's working in the hearts of all of us. Okay? And see, he the circumcision of the heart is what needs to be done. Okay? And we're going to stop here because we don't want to make it too long. I want to make a part two. Okay, and the Lord God, thy God, will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand and in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord thy God will again rejoice over the good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. Because when he first said what he made was very good, okay, and then he said again God will rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. And if thou shalt ha hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book for the law, the book of the law, if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all your soul, for this commandment which I command this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. For it is not in heaven that thou shalt say, who shall go up to heaven and bring it down? Because we're going to read this. His commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. He made it known what he wants you to do, okay? He made it known. He got the Ten Commandments in the Torah, okay? He got the way you eat you. Read the, 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 the first five books, okay? Okay? So now he's going to tell them in the end of the first five books, which is the Torah, I'm going to circumcise your heart. I got to circumcise your heart because we're going to see out of where all of these desires and this, this will. Now that man had a taste of good and evil. And as God said in the sixth uh, uh, verse of, uh, of uh, the 26th uh, verse of Genesis, man has become as one of us, <laughs> knowing good and evil. Okay, Man has got, got a will. Okay, And that will that man is still exercising. Okay, Still exercising that will. That was the 26th verse of Genesis, the first chapter. And let us make, okay, that was make man in our own image. That's something when I want. Or the third chapter, I'm sorry, y'all. When man is of thee. The third chapter, verses uh, 22. I want to make sure I indicate that. Uh, Genesis, the first chapter we read, and then we read the, uh, Genesis, the third chapter. I must put that. Verses 20. Uh, verses 22. No. No, verses 22. Yeah. These thoughts, we got to keep it focused. And we see God has given man ability to have a will. And we have one today. We have ability to choose God or to choose the devil. 
And you can see a lot of people done chose the devil. And apparently, according to this here in Genesis, the third chapter, uh, they are the seed of the serpent. Okay. You see this. You see them two seeds from Genesis, the third chapter, all the way. Okay. We see. And how do you become a seed of the serpent? Because you are what you eat. Okay. You, that's why God is telling them, um, for this commandment, which I command this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Uh, it is not in heaven that thou should say who should go up for us to heaven and bring it down to us that we may hear it and do it. We must hear it and do it. Who who going to bring it back? Then? We don't know what God is saying. That's not true. He said, no, nigh, neither is it be, beyond the sea that thou should say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Okay. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou may do it. So you know why God is telling you this here? Because see, it's nigh unto thee even in your mouth because God has given us a conscience. He given us a conscience and he's speaking to our conscience. That's why he said, choose life. See, I have set before thee this day the good and death and evil. I've set before you this day life and good, death and evil. That's going back good and evil. There's no good. I'm setting you got ability to choose. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where the thou goest. So he's still working with this creation, this creature. That now, as he said in Genesis um, uh, 30, uh, the third chapter, verse 22, okay, that man has become as us. That's what he said. Okay, now he's over here in Deuteronomy telling them the 30th chapter. Read all of that, y'all. Okay, okay. He said, the words is very nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. So God is was working with their heart. That's why he said, their heart is far from me. It's the heart. So we're going to do part two. And we got to specifically see what's happening inside of our heart. He said, who can know it? But God has given us some indications in the scripture what is happening in our hearts. Okay? Okay? That's why he said, the word is very nigh thee, unto thee in thy mouth. Because out of the heart, your mouth is speaking. Okay? That's what we got to indicate. So we did Genesis, um, uh, the first chapter. Okay? One. And we went all the way to the third chapter and, keep, and focus on the fall of Adam and the will that God gave him and the, uh, the third chapter, verse 22. Okay, and now we're in Deuteronomy because it's, we got to know we have a will, y'all. We have a will and we are exercising it all the time. Okay, but he wants us, he said, uh, that I set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Okay. I set before you. And it's, it, it's still set before us. But if thine heart turn away. So you, uh, I need to read all this too, okay? It says, I command thee this day to love the Lord. Okay, and it goes down to verse 17. If thine heart turn away, so that thou will not hear. So it's your heart that turn you away from not hearing God. But shall be drawn away. Drawn away. And see that drawn away is talking about, uh, is, is, I think Timothy said, when you are drawn away, you're drawn away of your own lusts and entice. Okay? That drawn away. So we need to go all the way down all of uh, Deuteronomy. You are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely per perish. And thou shalt not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest. Denounce. Okay? I will denounce you. Like people say, you, uh, uh, the children is uh, that God was married to her. He said, you should know a breach of promise. <laughs> he put that in there. Y'all not going to hold me to what I say and you're going to just run off and do what you want to do. Okay? I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish. And that, Now this same will 
It's the same in our heart. It's the same thing that's work, working today. That same ability to choose life and good, or uh, or uh, evil and death. It's the same choice. It man, the only way you get a new creature is through Christ. All of us is born, even babies got the ability, okay, to choose. The children can lie. Two children can be sneaky. All this is, this is still the same that you saw with Adam, you see now. Okay? But God said, I denounce you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land where the thou passes over the Jordan to go to possess it. So they, he done took them all the way <clears throat> when they get ready to go over the Jordan. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I, I have set before you life and death. Blessings and curses, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, and thou mayest, because he said, uh, <clears throat> obey my voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of days that thou mayest, mayest uh, dwell in the land which the Lord thy God uh, swear unto thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Okay? So, so this same, what you see speaking over here is actually talking to us, okay? I know you think, I'm not, yes, you did because you're in the same process. You're still a human being. You're still coming up. Until you are born of Christ, the new Adam, the better covenant, you still have all these things applied to you, okay? You still know good and evil. You still got the choice to choose life or death or good and evil. You still got a choice, okay? Okay? And you still got a choice to choose to hear the voice of God. So we're going to close. Oh, I want to sing this song. And we're going to close out, okay? The song says, Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the roll. I've been chained since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be, that's the will, ready when Jesus comes. I want to be. Ready when Jesus, we got to want to be. <laughs> Ready when Jesus come. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to start the next one with this song. I want to be, it's a will. They say, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the roll. I've been chained since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be. Ready when Jesus come. It's a matter of your will. Do you want to be? Ready when Jesus comes. We're going to part, part two. Because, see, there's some things that we got to be willing. Uh, and and um, the other one, we're going to sing the other song besides this one. It's uh, um, Give Me a Clean Heart. Bishop Bryant used to sing that in our church. Our bishop put that song in us. He had us singing that song. Give me a clean heart. He had us speaking it out of our mouth. <laughs> oh, so I... My thee, Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee. I'm going to get the tune to uh, give me a clean heart. Bishop put that in the hearts and the minds of the people coming out of the world. He <laughs> had them singing this song. <laughs> and we were singing it and we were crying. Okay. And so we got sign me up to the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the road. I want to be. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. And I hope you want to be. And so we're going to be dealing with the clean heart. Because we got to pray. Lord, give me a clean heart. So I might serve thee. Lord, fix my heart. I'm going to get the tune on. Because I'm going to go back and listen to Bishop Price singing. And he's gone on the glory. But he put that song all the time in the ears. He was singing that song for himself from the pulpit. Give me a clean heart. have the choir. Sing that song. These children are coming out of the world, and you need to put that in their mouth. They're going to have what they say, and we will be singing that song. Give me a clean heart. <laughs> and the song, sign me up. For we will be speaking things through songs that dealt with our heart. Now, you think we knew that, that we was actually... Those words was coming in our ears that it was dealing with our heart. No, we were just singing it. But you can feel it as you sung it. You felt it. Give me a clean heart so that I might serve you. Lord, fix my heart. We were singing. I'm telling you, you have to sing song that would transform the people. 
songs that would train. I trained that hymn book that I have over here. <laughs> Those songs ministered and got in my heart. Because, see, you're talking about the heart over here. Okay? You're talking about the heart. And if you, if you need to something in your heart, you need to get the word of God and these songs and you rehearse some things into your ears. And so your heart can, we're going to deal with the heart, Lord willing. Okay, let's close up. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, for being Lord over our lives. You Lord over our lives. You Lord over us. We commit ourselves to you, the keeper of us. Uh, uh, of keeping of our souls to our creator, our maker, the same one that fashioned Adam, the same one that that uh, gave us, oh God, the opportunity to become new creatures in you. Thank you, Jesus. New creation. You're doing a new thing. You said, shall we not know it, Lord God? We thank and praise you for the knowledge of being transformed and being renewed in our minds and souls, Lord God. We thank and praise you for the work that you are doing in us even now. We to you, our body, soul, spirit, even our will. We might go say, hallelujah. Not our wills, Lord, but your will be done in us. We submit our will to your will. We pray that your will be done in us, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Awaken our ear to hear and our heart to receive your word. Oh, God, transform us and renew us. Hallelujah. After Christ, as we commit ourselves to your hands, we pray that this word will fall on good ground. And those who understand how you said in Genesis 3rd chapter, verse 22, that man had become as one of us, knowing good and evil. And from that creation, you barred him from the tree of, the, of life. Lord, but I thank and praise you that you continue to work with him, that he did not remain. He, could, he doesn't have to remain in that state. As you told them in Deuteronomy, oh God, hallelujah, that you set before them. They are to choose. Use that will to choose life. Use that will to choose good. Use that will to obey your voice. We thank you, praise you. For you're not creating a man of earth. You're creating a man of spirit. My God, hallelujah, one that will sit with you, one that, hallelujah, that you will dwell in, God. Not the one that's fashioned after clay, but one that will be your tabernacle, the one that you can come in and dwell in. We thank you, Lord God, for this transformation. We thank you for this work that you're doing in us, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your help us, oh God, to trans transition, oh God, into the new creation. Fashion after the Christ, oh God, in them I Help us, God, in the name of Jesus, not to stay earthly bound, Lord God, to be changed. Oh God, hallelujah, by the unction of your and the power of your Holy Spirit, that we will sit and reign with you, oh God, not just on the earth, but in heaven. We thank and praise you for the work that you're doing in Adam, and the work you're doing in the second Adam, which means the second man. The final Adam, Lord, is the transformed creation in Christ. Lord, the new man, hallelujah, that's fashioned after the form of Jesus Christ. We ask you to have your way. Not the first one, even the second came, which is a quickening spirit, hallelujah, and quickening us. And when he rose, he rose as the new man, hallelujah, the first, second, and the third, Adam, Lord God, hallelujah, the new creation, a new one who could feel, who could move. Oh, God, we thank you for that, Adam, that we become a part of that, Adam. We thank you for the work that you're doing in us. May we truly go all the way, Lord, and complete the work that you have begun in us. We will complete it and present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding and great joy. We thank and praise you. You are the only wise God. Hallelujah. For we commit ourselves into your hands. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. I hope you know it's not finished. It's not finished yet. So we're going to come back and we're going to specifically deal with give me a clean heart and uh, sign me up. And then we're going to go straight into the lot of scriptures about the heart. Okay. Um, and you saw here he talked about circumcising the heart. Okay. That was coming out of the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to circumcise the heart, okay? So that is important for us to know. What does God have to cut away? Because see, the, remember, the, the loins of a man is where the reproduction comes to bring forth fleshly children. 
Okay, but the circumcision of the heart is God doing, and he got to cut away some things so that we can produce, okay, in the spiritual realm, okay? The trees are re yielding fruit after their own kind, okay? So God got to circumcise our heart. So please continue to follow, and this is just the beginning. I'm excited because God is helping us. So please push the like button. And look, I'm over here, y'all. This room doesn't have the air conditioner. You know, I did put it on a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna put it. On, I'm gonna put it on in the morning because this is like a side room, and uh, so it's all usually off. The main house have its own circulation, and this has its own uh, uh, air condition by itself. But anyway, I thank God for you. I'm excited that God is is taking us this way to understand that not just Adam and Eve had a will. Okay, we have one too, and we are seeing Deuteronomy. What are we choosing? Are we choosing life and good or death? And, and, and uh, 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 evil and death. What are we choosing? You can see every day, okay? Because he could have said we, that we became like him. We can choose, okay? So he's going to deal with these little gods. In fact, he talks a little bit further. that the, uh, Didn't it worse that you'd be like gods? So that's why a lot of times people say, I'm God, okay? But you're a fallen God. <laughs> fallen little G, okay? You're a fallen little G, and you are dealing with evil and good. You're, you're doing both. Okay, and that means it's a it's a tree of mixed fruit. Okay, it's mixed, you know. So God wants to make us perfect, and I pray that I'm excited about it. What God is leading us to understand, and then hopefully by the grace of God, we will see some things that we need to release. We need to get out of our heart. As the song, "Give me a clean heart." Okay, let's close out. <laughs> Father, we thank and praise you for my sisters and brothers all over the world, the children. We thank you that you are here, Lord Jesus, subduing all things under your foot. We thank and praise you as we humble ourselves under you, the mighty hand of God. We put ourselves, hallelujah, under you, Lord God. We submit our will to your will. We pray that your will be done each and every one. And everyone that come on this YouTube channel, I don't care where they are on the earth, Lord God. Wherever they are, and if they self-will and, and following after the adversary, Lord God, we pray that you uh, uh, give them, oh God, speak to their hearts and minds. Help them as you have done throughout creation, throughout all through the time that you dealt with them. Even in the Deuteronomy, Lord, in, in the five Torah, you saw that the time in the, uh, the Noah, you said it's going to be like that time again. Oh God, what people just going after their own imagination. Lord, help us, God, in the name of Jesus, as a human race, our children and everyone. And we are even blessed now because the Holy Spirit is here, reproving the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. Because the prince of this world is already judged. Of righteousness because, Lord Jesus, you are seated in heaven. And, and no more to be sacrificed. It's already done. The sacrifice has been paid. The price has been paid. Hallelujah. And sin because they don't, we don't, uh, uh, mankind is not receiving you. Lord, we thank and praise you. Help us to complete the process that we will be transformed. And it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. <laughs> what we shall be, that we will be like Christ. We will be like Christ. And we thank you for this work that you're doing in us. And we say yes. Remember every single soul in Vegas, in Venezuela, in California, George, all those, Annette and those in Hartsfield, uh, all those who listen in, in, in this and in wherever they may be, Lord God. Some I don't even know, but wherever they are, whatever part of the country they are, wherever part of the globe they are, please remember those souls. You are giving me these words, and I pray that they will accomplish what you have sent them out, out to do. They have been a blessing to me, and I pray they be a blessing to your children. My God, awaken them. If their ears are stop, God, unstop their deaf ears. Unstop their ears to hear, Lord. Because you say, oh, gosh, you say, here and our souls shall live. Here and our souls shall live. Lord God, help us, oh God. We pray that you would unstop deaf ears, that we might hear and receive your word into our hearts. Because it's still you sit here and in our hearts. So we hear our hearts receive things, what we hear it enter into our hearts. Help us to understand that everything we let into our ears go right into our hearts. Help us to understand that. 
We pray that this word from you will fall on good ground and take root in our lives. It's in Jesus' name I pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. So go back and read Deuteronomy 30 and Genesis all the way up to the third chapter. Okay, so it's just uh, the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy and Genesis 1 to 3 and see what's happening there. Okay, pushing the like button. This is an hour. So please log on. I'm going to make this part one and then we're going to come back and deal with the heart. Because if you're earnestly, seriously, sometimes you don't even realize that that is where the stronghold of the enemy is. Like you can see in Deuteronomy, he told Cain when he slew Abel that the, the, uh, the uh, sin lieth at the door. And it means the door of his heart. I need to pull that out of Deuteronomy because sin lies at the door. And it's talking about the heart. He said, I stand at the door. So we don't realize the heart is the door. Your heart is the door to use. Okay? The heart is the door. Okay? Of your soul is the, the heart. Things that go into your heart is going into your soul. Okay? We need to deal with that too. The heart is the door. Okay? There's scripture to indicate that too. So please push the like button. Encourage us to come on. Be blessed. Walk in victory. Amen.